Hey, how's it going, Dewey Soul First? Today I'm going to show you how you can find and diagnose a shorted wire or circuit on your car, which is going to be the main culprit if you have fuses that keep popping on your vehicle. Now, this video is going to be the second video in a three part video series I'm doing on how you can diagnose some common electrical issues with your vehicle. So, the first part was on how you can find and diagnose an open circuit on your car, and I showed you how you can do this using a test light and a multimeter. And in the next part, I'm going to show you how you can find a parasitic draw on your car's battery which usually drains your battery and causes a nose start. And if you're interested in any of those videos, I'll put links to them at the end of this video, so you make sure you watch this video all the way to the end. All right, so much like the previous video, in order to find the short, all we're going to need is a basic multimeter, a simple test light with an incandescent light bulb, and some wires with alligator clips at the end of them, which will make our life a lot easier. And as always, if you're interested in any of the tools or products I use in my videos, I put links to where you can buy them for cheap online down below in the description box. So don't be afraid to click on them and check them out. And for demonstration purposes, we're going to use this very basic circuit for our headlight bulb made up of our battery, our fuse at the fuse box, our headlight bulb, and our headlight switch. All right, so let's get on with it. So basically, electrical current would like to find the path with the least amount of resistance from the positive side of the battery to the negative side. And now if you put some wires between these two sides and an electrical load, like this headlight bulb, we can manipulate this to get some work done with this current. So here's an example of a positive short to ground. So here on this circuit, we have a damaged wire on our positive side that has shorted to a damaged ground wire. And electrical current, instead of going through this wire to our load, which is our headlight bulb, which has some resistance, it just goes through this ground wire that has no resistance back to our battery. And when this happens, you're basically shorting out the battery. See, without the load to offer resistance to current flow, the battery will put out its maximum uh, amps that it can put out, and a car battery can put out a few, quite a few hundred amps. And when a few hundred amps flow through these tiny wires, they get really hot real quick, and that's how electrical fires start. Unless you have a fuse on the positive side of the circuit. So for example, in this circuit, you have a 15 amp fuse here, and as soon as this shorts out here, this is gonna pop, saving all your uh, wiring and other components that might be in this circuit. Something you wanna keep in mind is that the ground side of your battery is also connected directly to the chassis of your car. And the chassis of your car allows for many circuits in your car and many electrical circuits to get completed that way. So in so many wars, this hot wire doesn't necessarily have to get damaged and touch another damaged ground wire. It could simply, you know, wear out or get damaged and rub against the chassis and it could get grounded and shorted out that way as well. So for example, the battery on this car, as you can see, is in the trunk. And if you look close, you can see this cable from the negative side is bolted into this bracket, which is then bolted to the chassis of this car. And then on the positive side, this thick cable is ran towards the front of the car. And then you can see power supply to this junction box under the hood. Another one from here, I'm going to assume, goes to the starter. And again, these are thick because you need a lot of amps for the starter. And the starter is attached to the engine, which gets its ground by being connected to the chassis by grounding cables. And again, obviously the chassis is grounded by that cable in the back that I showed you. So it's key when you're looking for a short to inspect right by the connector, inspect the wires, make sure they're not worn out and not rubbing against the part of the chassis and getting shorted out that way. All right, so if a visual inspection doesn't provide any clues, here's how you go about diagnosing it. So you wanna to go to the connector for which the circuit keeps blowing the fuse. Then you wanna disconnect the connector. Next, go ahead and remove your blown fuse as well. And once again, grab your multimeter and set it to continuity. Then you would put your black test lead on a ground. It could be a chassis ground. And you wanna put the red test lead at the wire. And this way, we're checking for continuity to ground on this wire right here. And there should obviously be no continuity to ground, so what you wanna see is actually a one or an OL on your multimeter, which stands for open loop. And those are the only two acceptable readings on your multimeter. If you get any reading, any resistant reading, when you do this test, then you have a short to ground somewhere in that wire, and that's not acceptable. Now for this test, you could also use a test light. You would uh, attach this end to the positive side of the battery, and then with this end, you would touch this wire here, and if you have ground here, this is gonna complete the circuit and your test light is gonna light up. But the downside of using a test light is if there's high resistance in the short, your test light might not light up 
and you might have a false diagnosis. Whereas if you're using a multimeter, at the very least, you're going to get a reading indicating that there's a path to ground possible from this red wire, which there shouldn't be. I know what you're thinking. This chicks were short to ground on this wire, but what if you have a short to ground on this wire or cable that comes from your battery to your fuse box? So if that happens, you're not going to blow a fuse, but you're not going to have a nice day because since there's no fuse here, current is just gonna get shorted through the circuit and this cable or wire is probably gonna overheat and maybe even catch on fire. But don't be alarmed too much. Automotive manufacturers know this and they provide sufficient insulation on this cable from the positive side of your battery to your junction box. And again, once current gets to the junction box, it gets split off to different circuits and each circuit is protected by a fuse, as you can see. Also by now, I think some of you might have figured out why sometimes, especially if you have a weak battery, your dash lights and headlights go dim whenever you start your car and engage your starter. So your starter has very low resistance to the flow of current. So whenever you start your car, the current from your battery finds it much easier to go through your starter rather than through the junction box and through all the different uh, you know, light bulbs and sensors that have a much higher rate of uh, resistance to the flow of current. It all makes sense now that I've explained it to you, doesn't it? All right, so that's how you diagnose a positive short to ground, but obviously it's also possible to have a positive short to positive, although in my limited experience, that usually doesn't cause a fuse to blow. And that's because in order for the fuse to blow on a particular circuit, the power side of that circuit would have to come into contact with the power side of a separate circuit that has very low resistance in that circuit and that circuit is pulling a lot of amps, like the power uh, wire or the cable that goes to our starter, come into contact with the power or the positive uh, wire for a circuit that only pulls, let's say, five amps. If that happens, and when you engage your starter, and if that circuit is activated at the same time, in other words, there's current flow, um, you know, the current flow in this wire would increase because it would find it easier to go through the starter because there's less resistance in that. And as it increases, that's how it's gonna blow the fuse, but this is gonna be rare because this cable goes directly to your starter pretty much, and again, it's well insulated. It's not just because of that, because this cable is usually not bundled with any other wires for different circuits and whatnot. And as you can see in this junction box, we have a lot of uh, 10 amp fuses, we get some 15 and 20 amps, and on this side we get some 30 and 40 amps. But even if the power side of the circuit where we have a 10 amp come into contact with the power side where we have the 40 amp fuse, that doesn't necessarily mean that now we're going to have 40 amps to flow through this circuit. You know, the, the amps are going to might go up, but they're not going to go up uh, high enough where it's going to blow this fuse. Therefore, in my experience, this is why it's, uh, you know, it's fairly rare where we have a power-to-power -power short that causes a fuse to blow. However, I do need to clarify that the positive-to-positive -positive short can cause a fuse to blow, and it does happen on many cars if not only there's a short between the two circuits, but on the circuit that has lower resistance to the flow of current, there is also an open. If that happens, then this circuit is gonna to try to pull all of the current that it needs out of the wiring that's for this circuit that has higher resistance to the flow of current. So more current is gonna flow through this wire, through the short to this circuit, raising the amps and therefore blowing the fuse. And this doesn't have to be between two circuits that have vastly different resistance to the flow of current. So it doesn't have to be a starter circuit with another circuit that's pulling only five amps. It could be between a five amp circuit and a circuit that's pulling, I don't know, 25, 30 amps or so. Also, I should mention that it doesn't have to be a complete open, I guess. You know, if you have corrosion that causes a lot of buildup and builds up resistance to the flow of current before the short, then more current will flow through this circuit through the short to that circuit, causing the amps to go up and again blowing the fuse. But again, this is a short in conjunction with either an open or a buildup of resistance in this circuit. Now where a positive to positive short is more likely to give you issues is when a positive wire is shorted to a signal wire from a sensor. So let's say for example, this O2 sensor. So as some of you may know, an O2 sensor it usually sends out a varying signal between 0.1 to 0.9 volts through a signal wire to your ECU. Now, if you have a power short to the signal wire, you're simply just gonna get 12 volts sent to the ECU. Now, this usually doesn't damage the ECU even if this circuit is activated 
and current flowing through this because the signal wire is not grounded at the ECU, therefore it's not current flow, but rather you should think of the ECU where it meets this uh, signal wire as a multimeter where it measures the voltage coming from the O2 sensor. But anyway, before I get too sidetracked, uh, if that happens, you're obviously going to get a false reading and you're going to run into all sorts of performance issue problems with your car. Now, the way you can go about diagnosing this is to basically disconnect the connector at your ECU, grab your test light, connect this end to the negative side of the battery, this end to the signal wire. If you're, the light lights up, that means you are shorted to power. Also be careful, what you don't want to use for this test is a multimeter. Because if you do use a multimeter, and of course depending on what type of multimeter you use, uh, you might get a voltage reading here even though you don't have a short to power. That voltage reading is basically, I think, what's called a you know, ghost voltage. And ghost voltage is when you, know, you have a lot of different circuits and wires ran side by side each other in a wiring harness as different circuits become activated and deactivated that creates a magnetic field which causes that ghost voltage that you can measure with a multimeter at the end of this signal wire. But if you use a test light, your test light is not going to light up with uh, ghost voltage because you obviously need current for that test light to come on. Now as far as how you can find out to which circuit the signal wire on your O2 sensor is shorted to, first you want to make sure one end of your test light is connected to ground and then with the other end on the pin for the connector that's attached to your ECU, you're going to have to start pulling fuses one by one and the one that makes the light on your test light go out is the circuit for which the signal wire of your O2 sensor is shorted to. And again, even this doesn't happen that often. Majority of the time when you're talking about a short on a car, it's a positive short to ground that causes the fuse to blow. And again, this is because the entire chassis of your car is grounded. And the same goes for your engine that's grounded through your chassis. And again, same thing goes for your transmission. And if any hot wire is worn out and comes into contact with any of them, it's immediately shorted out, causing a fuse to blow. So that's all there is to it, folks. But before you go, do me a favor and share this video on your favorite social network. And if you're interested in the first episode or the third episode of this three-part video series, I'll put links to them on this side of the screen that you can click on. There will also be links down below in the description box as well. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.